All right, everyone, there's a whole new slew now of lawsuits being launched against the unconstitutional red flag laws being utilized currently in the United States. The idea of red flag laws, for the, the two people that aren't aware, is pre-crime. That is, that a person is disarmed based on the presumption that they are imminently going to become violent, uh, in some cases based on nothing more than their ideology and what would generally be considered perfectly legal, non-credible threats, um, intimidating speech, hate speech, you know, that, that term that means technically, legally, absolutely nothing. For instance, uh, we've seen several white supremacists, and I am not talking about like, oh, my, my Stefan Molnou is a white supremacist. I'm talking about actual Nazis, neo-Nazi groups. We've had people getting disarmed among those groups. Um, no illegal materials or weapons or anything were found, no illegal... Uh, posts were made on the internet. It's just people who happen to have bigoted views who say hyperbolic shit about, you know, m m race war or whatever. Um, that's not a crime. The idea that the Second Amendment does not cover people who are not partaking in criminal behavior is wrong. Um, it's, it's explicit. The Second Amendment shall not be infringed. It can't be any more clear than it's already been written. It also explicitly relates, by the way, to weapons of war. That's the only purpose. The weapons that the founders were talking about when the Second Amendment was incepted in the first place were explicitly weapons of war. What other kinds of weapons were being used? Muskets, cannons, grape shot, swords, bows, ah, weapons of war. The same exact things that the British soldiers were using uh, were being used by the British dissidents that became Americans. Um, it's explicit. There's no other purpose. By the way, uh, some, some single-action, black powder-fed revolver from the late 19th century is a weapon of war, and AR-15's not and never has been, just so that people can uh, get that understanding uh, in their brains. The idea that a person who is guilty of no crime can be limited in their use of the Second Amendment uh, unless there is an imminent credible threat to harm, uh, I, I think is blatantly and totally wrong. I expect that these red flag laws are not long for this world. But the main problem is that states and cities, they have a lot of money. They have a lot of lawyers. What they like to do is drag out a case long enough so that unless a person has substantial grassroots backing or they're very wealthy or they, they own a corporation or something, it becomes impossible for them to continue. What they've done, therefore, is to try to limit the ability of plaintiffs in these cases to, to actually crowdfund. Like groups like GoFundMe, Patreon, and stuff, they'll, they'll kick you off if you're attempting to gain money for a legal case in which you're defending your, your rights in this way because what they'll say is, well, this person's a Nazi. They have wrong thing views. We don't want that as part of our platform, so we're kicking them off. Literally, literally just the, the status of the person and their particular political views or something makes them a financial leper. It's interesting, by the way, how there hasn't been any form of outcry whatsoever among groups like the ACLU towards such behavior. Well, I mean, that's literally a curtailing of civil liberties, not just the Second Amendment, but the First Amendment and arguably the Fourth. I would think that that would have ACLU written all over it, but oh, they don't care about it. And so even if you just donate money to one of these causes, PayPal might look into that and say, well, you're not allowed to use our service anymore because you're a bad person. This is, by the way, why crypto and things like that are very important. Anonymity online, cryptocurrency, blockchains, the whole nine yards, dissident alt tech. You know, Subscribestar exists, everybody. It uses a porn payment processor that I think is based in Russia. So I don't think you have to worry about U.S. Silicon Valley firms <laughs> leaning on them and trying to shut them up. By the way, directly partnered with BitChute. Excellent site. Check out Subscribestar. I use them. I think I'm making about as much as I am on Patreon already there anyway. In the wake of Sargon getting banned, Patreon's in steep decline. It's been that way now for some time. Anyway, uh, the idea of pre-crimes. I mean, imagine that this were applied to other scenarios. Well, we're just going to throw you in jail for 30 days to monitor you because we think that the things you're posting on the internet are wrong think. That's basically what, what they're doing. Um, they haven't attempted that. I wonder why. The only exception, and there is one, would be for, for psychosis. Essentially, if the founders would have considered the person's behavior, what they're saying, doing, whatever, commensurate with lunacy, then there is a curtailing of liberty. A lunatic does not have their full rights. They have human rights. They have certain constitutional protections, but they don't have the right to keep and bear arms because they're not capable. They're, they're no longer literally part of the militia because they're incapable of bearing arms properly. 
their First Amendment rights. They, you know, when a lunatic is sitting on the street corner shouting at people incoherently, it becomes disorderly, it becomes a problem. The right to privacy when you're, you know, put in a medical institution in some ways is reduced. Um, I'm not seeing any evidence being offered by law enforcement or by the, the politicians involved in these red flag cases that these individuals constitute, number one, a credible threat, that they've made credible threats and it's not just hyperbolic, you know, rambling about race or whatever, or no, I hate my ex-wife so much, blah, 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 I'd like to stab her. Well, red flag law kicks in. That's not a credible threat. Ex-wife might not even be alive anymore, and yet the, the threat of violence is still taken, a court order is issued and their guns are taken away. That's improper. It's explicitly a violation of the Second Amendment. Thankfully, I think you'll eventually have a SCOTUS battle over this, because what will happen, the Ninth Circuit will rule against the plaintiffs and say, no, it's perfectly fine. Other more reasonable federal courts will rule against, the, uh, against state and local governments, and it'll be put before SCOTUS on appeal. SCOTUS, I have a feeling, will shoot down red flag laws under the underlying premise the Second Amendment is not suspended because an individual is deemed arbitrarily by the government to be a potential threat. They have to have demonstrated that they already are. That's why credible threats are illegal, but hyperbolic language like I'm going to put a laser on the moon and melt your face off is not. It's incapable of being acted on, it wouldn't reasonably be construed as serious, or it's just hyperbolic in a general sense. There's a legal differentiation between those two things. For most purposes, that should be applied to the federal red flag statutes as well. It's perfectly fine to disarm somebody who is issuing credible threats of violence. They have begun preparing for, for violence. But simply stockpiling ammo and, and canned goods and guns and, and having ballistic vests and stuff... That's not evidence of a crime impending. That's about all. Peace out.